everyone, it's Sharonda from Payroll Weeks, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Handmaid's Tale, Season 4, Episode 4, Milk. Alright, so, we're picking up where we left off from the end of last week's episode of The Crossing, where we saw that the other handmaids were basically killed by the train, and then for the others who were shot by the Guardian. So June and also to Janine are still on the run for their lives. I love some of the shots that we see throughout the course of the episode, um, of them running on the train tracks in the beginning, and then also too, um, at the nighttime scene and the next scene as they're kind of running across the tracks trying to run towards their freedom. Um, we see that June, Janine is basically freaking out as to what has just happened just as all of us were freaking out at the end of last week's episode. And then eventually June has to make Janine realize that the other handmaids are tell she's in or dead. She's in, she's in shock at this point. Right. And so essentially they end up climbing into one of the containers on um, a train that they see, which is a trainer contained of, you guessed it, of milk. All right. So this is where we get our episode uh, title from I don't know about you guys very random story time I have this really aversion to smelly milk but especially smelly whipped cream I did a whip a pie eating contest in seventh grade and like I got some on I'll never forget I had this Tommy Hilfiger sweater and I got some on there and literally the smell repulsed me so bad I can never eat whipped cream again and I really can't stand the smell of certain milk products so I was just like the fact that y'all in this whole container filled with milk I just can only imagine what it smelled like okay it was just too much for me but we see that um you know June's being consumed with trying to take care of Janine Janine's falling asleep she doesn't want her to get hypothermia um of falling asleep into the cold milk as some of the milk has really um I don't know if it drained into another container if it evaporated I don't know what the heck happened but the, all of a sudden there was a whole bunch of milk and then it went somewhere else and it was gone so I'm not sure what happened I know y'all correct me in the comment section like sis this is what happened however I'm very happy that in this episode we see that someone finally has to confront June for her actions. But most importantly, the actions that she chooses to only think of herself and really for her own motivations and goals while putting others in danger in order to achieve that. And so we saw that in last week's episode, even though we understood that they made her believe that Hannah was going to be hurt, but she risked the lives of these other women in order to make sure that she could protect her daughter. Now, many would say, Sharana, what are you talking about? Like, you, what would you do to save your child? I mean, but I'm happy that in this conversation that they're ha having, that Janine calls her out on it. She's like, what is your plan? What What are we supposed to do now? Like, you, all these people follow you because they think you have this master plan. You always lie to us and act as though, you know, I'm, we're doing this for a purpose. We're doing this for Mayday. This is part of the resistance. However, none of these plans actually come to fully live out through fruition. And really most of the time it ends up in other people being punished for June's actions. We saw this last week in the episode when we saw the two women who had to die because June didn't want to tell them where the handmaids were. And then also too, how the events that happened at the end of the episode for the crossing, how these women died because of June's actions. And I think it's something very important that they continue to shed light on this because I feel as though June has been kind of getting away with murder, literally getting away with murder all of these seasons because she's never had to be confronted that her actions are out of her own self-interest and not necessarily in the best interest of everyone involved. And so I'm happy that she tells her like, hey, like you're telling me like, she, when she tells her like, you would have did the same, like they, cause she asks her like point blank, did you tell them where we were? Is that how they found us? And so she tells her like, they were gonna hurt Hannah, you would have did the same thing. And she was like, but see, that's what you're missing. You don't know what I would have done. And I wouldn't have given you guys up. Because it's one of those things where it's like, is this one life more important than killing all of these other people and all of the people who have died in all of the past seasons of The Handmaid's Tale trying to help June live out her mission of finding Hannah. And so I like that Janine is the one who pushes her on this. Um, because when she makes a comment like, I would have to keep saving you like I always do, I was just like, hold up. June, did they not save you at the beginning of the season when you were shot for another one of your reckless decisions where you put not only the handmaids in danger, you put the Marthas in danger, you put the children in danger in order for you to try to stick it to the man to get back at Gilead by stealing all of their children. Nor does she think about the emotional re uh, repercussions of these children who have only known these people as their parents who don't have a full grasp on what is wrong with Gilead. She never thought of the repercussions for those children when she took them, when she got them on the plane. 
And so the fact that Janine is the one who saves her at the beginning of this season, she's the one who closes her wound. She knows to get her wound closed in order so she won't bleed out. If Regina can have the audacity to tell her that I'm gonna have to keep saving you. I was just like, wow, June, like, are you being serious right now? So it hasn't been a mutually beneficial relationship of Janine saving you from yourself as well? Have it make sense for me. I was just like, June, it was highly unlikable in this episode. I mean, she tried to redeem herself at the end, but I was just like, since you doing a little bit too much, like you really got a leg to stand on at this point. So <clears throat> we see that, um, she tells her, like, I wouldn't have told them where the handmaids were. When we were, when Alma said, hey, we, when we were hiding out and they were like, you know, possibly thinking about having to go somewhere else, they were like, we have to wait for June. We're not going to leave June. And she tells June that they loved her. And it's really something that's important because I don't know if in June's mind, she thinks that, I don't understand that she realizes how selfish she is. And at moments how sometimes she can be, weak in the point that they let her they continuously manipulate june because they know that june is only out for herself and it's kind of in this conversation when we see um, lydia confront her um and then she basically tells lydia that all you did was lie to these women and led them to their doom but it's like june you did the same thing right at some points we can see the same attributes of um, lydia we see that in june as well but <clears throat> we then go into we go into a flashback of Janine. So we get a backstory of Janine. She's working at Denny's and we see she's trying to switch schedules with one of her co-workers. She has to go to a doctor's appointment and that's where we find out that Janine is in fact pregnant. And so she ends up talking to the lady. The lady seems a little sketch, seems a little off. She starts bringing up religion and making sure that she understands that this is a life in her, um, this is a life in her stomach. And so it doesn't seem like it's your typical abortion clinic. So she realizes that this was a crisis center that was in disguise as an abortion clinic in order to try to talk Janine into keeping her baby. But I do like one thing that the lady says, even though she's still trash too, I do like that she tries, she tells the Janine that you are always underestimated. You can tell that Janine comes from people who have constantly left her, people who haven't believed in her, people who haven't shown her the love that she shows others. And we see that Janine desperately grasps to these relationships, how she grasps to the co relationship with the previous commander to let her to get her eye out when she had the baby, her relationship with Aunt Lydia, even though Aunt Lydia does these unspeakable things to her, she always wants to see the good in her and wants to continue to love her. Even with this um, relationship with June, we start to see that. And so so we get to see her uh, later in the episode. We see that she um, is singing to her uh, son, Caleb. She already has a child. This is something that she explains um, that she's just not ready, right? Um, she's kind of in these relationships that don't really mean anything. And there's kind of these consequences that happen. And it's just like, hey, I got to pick up all the pieces after they leave. And so we see her sing to her son to sleep, which is absolutely adorable, adorable. I love her voice. But most importantly, we see her go to a real doctor who lets her know that her choice is what's important. If you know that you are not able to take care of this child and this is the decision that you want to make, then that is okay. And so I like that when she tells her like, you know, oh, I just take this pill, that's it. And she was like, well, you already did the hard part, right? And so this is really reaffirming that Janine can make decisions for herself. She has agency over herself. And I like that she stands up to June to let June know I am not this charity case that constantly needs to be saved as if what June was alluding to. So we see that um, she ends up, um, they start to hear shooting as we are taken back into the milk tank. They hear a shooting, then June is like, let's get out. She was like, F that. And I was like, right, Janine? Because I was just like, who? You hear gunshots and your, your first idea is just like, oh, gunshots? Okay, let's go outside and see what's happening. Beach, no. What, what were you thinking, June? I was right there with her. So June crazy behind, end up getting out, child. And then they meet these people. Um, they basically are the ones who were shooting. They killed the guardians. She sees the dead guardians on the ground. She convinces them to take them back to their base camp. And Steven got to go. Got to go. I was ready to fight him, all right? So they're basically letting them know, like, hey, we barely have food here. Like, this is the first thing that we were able to find in months. Um, you know, you're going to have to work and keep your own, like, in order to stay here. And so June's trying to convince them and they let them stay. He was like, well, when are you going to have to stay back here? And I was like, hold up, stay back here for what? What, for what? 
And then you know this, ooh, I almost cursed. Ooh, Lord, thank you for catching me. Ooh, because you already knew I was going to go in on him. He had the audacity. First of all, he called them sex slaves, right? Then he had the audacity to, to tell her, actually, let me read my paper because I'm getting all pissed off already just thinking about it all over again. When she basically says that, um, talking about nothing is free and that you have nothing else to offer as if they don't have skills or any trades that they might have known that basically their body is the only thing to offer. It's just crazy to me that he's even saying this. But essentially he's basically, she June volunteers so she so they can just take Janine to get something to eat. And then he can tell that she's afraid that she has this disgust look in her face. And he was like, I'm not gonna force you to do anything you don't want to. Well, bitch, did anybody say I was gonna get on my knees and, and do something strange for a piece of change? Like, who who said that in the first place? And now you wanna be like, well, I'm not gonna force you to do anything. What, well, I'm gonna stop because I'm gonna end up cursing. So essentially we see that um, he says, she basically says to him like, hey, like you're not Mayday, are you? And he's like, what's Mayday? And so this breaks my heart to see this scene with June, even though she was getting on my nerves in a couple of scenes prior, because it breaks my heart that she felt that getting free, that Mayday was this thing that she could believe in to continue on, to continue to fight for Hannah, to fight for everybody else, right, in her mind. And basically, you just see the disgust that she has for men in this world. You're fighting against these people who have basically turned women, who, who continuously rape women day in and day out, right? And then you get to this other group on the other side who is kind of the resistance who are fighting against them, who are killing the guardians, but they're no better. So it's just like, it's almost as if there's no good, no more good people left in this world today that she can really cling on to hope for. And so I really felt that when even in her look as she's looking at him and she says like, you're not Mayday, are you? And then she basically tells Janine, she's like, oh hell no, we gotta get the hell up out of here. We can't stay here, girl. Like these people crazy. And so, um, we see that later in the episode, <clears throat> we see that Janine comes back to her um, as, as, you know, June is staring off and just thinking and essentially it alludes to the fact that she slept with Steven and she then she hands her food as if that in order to get them food that she had to sleep with him or have some type of sexual activity with him. And so it hurt me because I was just like, Janine, I don't want you to be used anymore. Like, you don't have to do this. But it seems as though it was it was her choice is what she wanted to do. But she had that look in her eye like she really likes Steven. And she was talking about, oh, he he loves, he thinks my patch is cool, my eye patch is cool. So it just sucks because you're seeing her go down this road that she continuously went down with the commander that she was in love with. Um, you know, even going back into her flashbacks of depending on other people in order to find her own happiness. But in the case that she just wanted to get her some on her own terms, I'm okay with that too, girl. Do what you need to do. But I just don't want her to get attached to him because he's a creep. Like, I just, I really had issues with him in the first place. But I gotta talk about my girl, Rita, y'all. That's enough for them. That's enough for them. Let me talk about Rita. Because Rita had some very petty moments and I was totally here for all of this, okay? So, Rita was making the hell out of that dough. Rita had me feeling like I can go make me some sourdough bread or whatever type of bread it was. She had me feeling like I was watching the Food Network because I was really into it. We see that Maura tells her that she wasn't able to find any information on her sister or her nephew um, in the refugee um, database. However, you know, Catholics were changing names. You know, they could have a different alias, like not to give up hope. But we see that she ends up telling that Serena wants to talk to her and that she thinks that it will be good in order for her to be able to have closure. This is once again where I feel like Maura would be doing too much because I'd be like, girl, were you really like a thing? What were you in your past like? Because I totally forgot. But I feel like... I don't like how Mora tries to force people to deal with their trauma or forces them to deal with it in a way that she feels is pleasing. Um, but we'll get into that. That's a whole topic for a whole nother day, child. But um, it felt like Rita Stott was defending her. I said, baby girl, you got Stockholm Syndrome or something? What's happening? Because it sounded like she was defending her at first. But so she goes to talk to Serena and Serena was just on her basic manipulative, manipulative BS, okay? So she's talking to her, and then she shows the picture of the sonogram, and then she tells her she's pregnant, and she was like, oh, the commander should be so happy. And she was like, well, 
It was God's grace that gave me a baby. I said, that ain't nothing but the spawn of Satan. But you know what? I'm not going to wish that on that baby, okay? I hope that the baby is okay, but I hope the baby don't have you as a raggedy mama to look up to. So, we see that she um, tells her that she's not has no intention on telling Fred that she's pregnant um, at all. And I find it interesting that throughout this episode, we see Rita, she comes into contact with her previous, her captors, right? Um, that she continues to address them as ma'am, as sir. Um, but then she, we see that she starts to gain her own independence towards the end of the episode. So we see that she tells her, um, she was like, I'm so happy. Like you can, we could be a family. You help take care of the baby. I said, nah, bitch, I know you didn't just tell me to come up in here thinking I'm going to watch your raggedy behind and your baby behind. I know you did it. I was like, Serena, the audacity, but I don't put nothing behind her because she raggedy just like her husband raggedy. So you thought you was going to come after you kidnapped me? Held me captive, had me cooking and cleaning and dealing with all y'all raggedy mess, all y'all mess with June. And you thought I was going to sit up here and take care of your baby? Girl, are you serious right now? Like, ooh, I be Sarita, I be like, ooh, you ain't nothing but the devil, okay? And then she was like, it's nice to have a friend. Friend? We ain't friends. We're not friends. You were literally, you had me as if I was property, I just didn't understand it. And I like that when Mr. Um, Tuello, because he bothered me too, because I know he got the thing for Serena and it really irks my soul and my spirit, just everything inside of me. And he like hands her this book for the defense. And that's essentially why Serena asked her to come. She's being manipulated to make them feel like she's friends to get her to testify for her in order to go against Fred. And I was just like, this raggedy wank just, just, ugh, the bottom of the gutter, okay? And so I like that she tells him, like, these people view me as property. You think I'm going to help them? Are you serious? Like, that's what you think is going to happen? And so we see she going to meet with Fred Raggedy behind Chow. And so basically she's still saying sir to him. And he asks about her family. And I'm just like, sir, why you? did you ask me about my family when I was your prisoner? Did you ask me how they were doing? Did you ask me that? So why are you asking to me now? I'm sorry, I'm getting really emotional and upset because you don't know how the Waterfords bother my spirits, okay? So then we see that um, she says like, hey, Fred, we not friends, boo. Cause like for some reason, your raggedy wife, your raggedy behind, y'all seem to think that we're friends and I need to tell you, I don't know if I need to say it in a different languages, but we're not your friends. But the petty moment that I loved is when she essentially gave him the picture of baby and said, deal with your family because that ain't my job no more. And I thank God for that every day. I said, beast, you better drop that mic, okay? And you saw his face looking like, baby, baby boy, what? And so, when she said, I will pray for your, uh, I'll pray for your son. That was the second baby moment that I was definitely here for. But I felt like Rita, you earned your plate of sushi, honey. You earned everything. Cause the pettiness of you spilling the beans to Fred to let him know that he's having a baby to get back at Serena for trying to manipulate you, trying to manipulate you. And Fred said, like, I never caused you harm. Beesh, are you serious right now? Oh my God. These people was tripping. Like, Fred and Serena are the most delusional, evil, demon spawns that I have ever seen, okay? That I've ever encountered. And the fact that they just feel like the Lord is still sending them blessings from above for raping, killing, like, still in a country. I don't understand why they think that this is okay, but I am highly confused. But yeah, let me stop, because I'm going to give myself a heart attack talking about all of this stuff. Those are my thoughts about the Raggedy Waterfords and June Crazy Behind and Janine, the real MVP. Those are my thoughts on The Handmaid's Tale Season 4, Episode 4, Milk. As always, my name is Sharonda from Pair Weights. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit the notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. And until I see you again.